guys welcome back to my channel for today's tutorial i'm going to show you how i make this granny square skirt it actually works up really quickly because essentially you're just making a bunch of granny squares and you can do this in any colors that you like so i hope you guys enjoy i will have the full written pattern with sizing tips available on my patreon the link will be down below in the description box but let's go ahead and get into the tutorial to get started on this, I am going to take a bunch of different color yarns. So I am using the Lily brand sugar and cream yarn. This is a medium weight four. And basically to get started with this, you can do any kind of color combination that you prefer. You could even just stick to a theme of colors. Like if you want to just do like yellows or pinks or blues, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of everything. I do have nine different colors. I'm going to use this cream color as the base. And then I am going to alternate with all of these different colors. If you do want it to be a little bit more 70s or like a traditional kind of granny square, I would also get just a darker color brown, but I do want to keep it kind of bright and colorful. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how to make the granny square. It is similar to the pattern that I made for my granny square fanny pack. So this is just going to be a little quick refresher. You're going to have three different colors plus the base color for every granny square so you can do this in any combination that you would like so i'm just going to choose this color for this start so i'm gonna begin by making a slip knot and then with my hook i'm going to be taking a 4.5 millimeter hook so to get started i'm going to chain four And then I'm gonna place my hook through that very first chain and I'm gonna connect it together with a slip stitch. Then I'm going to chain two. This is gonna count as the first double crochet. Then I'm gonna be placing my hook through the ring and we're gonna place a total of 16. That's going to include this very first chain two. Okay, so now I have completed a total of 16. So now I'm going to um, place a slip knot in the top of that chain two at the beginning and just place one slip knot. Then I'm going to cut and tie and pick out my color two. So now I'm going to grab my color two and I'm going to attach it to any chain. So I'm just going to yarn over, pull it through the chain, and make a single knot. And then I'm just going to yarn over, pull it through, and I'm going to chain two to bring up the yarn. So now we're going to be doing puff stitches. So I'm going to yarn over, go through that same chain, pull through, and kind of pull it up so it matches the length of the chain two. Then I'm going to yarn over, go through that same chain, pull it up, and since this has a chain two, I'm going to stop here, yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your hook, and then chain one. So I'm going to repeat that in all of these chains. So um, for every other puff stitch, you're going to yarn over and go through the chain three times. So I'm going to yarn over, go through the chain, pull up, yarn over, go through the chain, pull up, yarn over, go through the chain, pull up, and then I'm going to yarn over, pull through, chain one. So I'm going to repeat that for every chain in this row. You will have a total of 16 puff stitches. So now I have completed all of my puff stitches. Just an FYI, um, one of your puff stitches will be going through the slip stitch from the row beneath so it will be a little bit more difficult to make it through that chain so just make sure you're not skipping over that because you do 
need to maintain 16 in order to have the right number for the square. So now all I'm going to do is just place a slip stitch through the top of that chain 2 from the beginning of the row. And then from here, I'm just going to cut. Um, so now I'm just going to fasten off by yarning over, pulling it all the way through and tightening it. So now we're going to take our color 3. And again, I'm just going to attach through any chain. But what I'm going to be doing is pulling apart the puff stitches and just going through that chain 1 space. And I'm going to just reattach my yarn with a single knot. And now we are going to be doing a double crochet puff stitch. So I'm going to place my yarn through, yarn over, chain three. And then again, working through the chain one spaces, I'm going to yarn over, go through that same chain, pull through, pull through two. And then once more, yarn over, go through, pull through, pull through two. So for this first double crochet puff stitch, I have three chains on my hook. I'm just going to yarn over, pull through all three. That's only because I have a chain three at the beginning already, but for the remainder of the double crochet puff stitches, we will be going through a total of three times. So I'm going to chain two in between every double crochet puff stitch, and then going through the next chain one space, I'm going to yarn over, go through that next space, pull through, pull through two. So you're basically finishing half of a double crochet before you yarn over, go through again, pull through, pull through two. Then once more, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. So you'll have a total of four loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through all four, chain two. So I'm just going to repeat that for the remainder of the round. You will have a total of 16 double crochet puff stitches. So now I've finished off that third row and I just attached it um, to the beginning with a slip knot and fastened it off. So now I'm going to begin on the edging. I'm just going to, I'm going to attach my base color. So I'm just going to do the same way with just a single knot. And then I'm going to get started with a chain three. This is going to count as the first treble crochet. So I'm just going to wrap the yarn around the hook twice and go back through that same chain. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So that is a treble crochet. So I'm going to add a total of three and that chain three counts as one. So I'm going to have a total of three treble crochet going through this chain and then I'm going to have a total of three double crochet going through the next chain. And then I'm going to have a total of three half double crochet going through that next chain. And now that's half of one side, so I'm going to mirror this for the remainder of this side. So going backwards, the next um, chain one space is going to get three double crochet. And then the next chain space is going to get three treble crochet. So now I have finished off one side of the granny square to make the turn. You're just going to chain three. And now this is going to be your next side. So going through that same um, space that you're already working in, you're going to add another, another set of three treble crochet. So now that makes one corner, and then I'm just going to repeat this on this side as well. So the next chain space will get three double crochet. And then the next chain space will get three half double crochet. And then mirroring that going backwards, three double crochet. And then three half double crochet.
So then that is your second side. So I'm just going to repeat that process for the other two sides and then I will be back to show you what's next. So now I have completed all of the sides. I just have the last square to finish up. So you will be putting your last set of treble crochet into that same chain that the first three are coming out of. So now I've placed my three treble crochet. I'm just going to chain three and then attach it to the top of the first treble crochet. So now you're going to cut and fasten off and you are finished with your first granny square. So now I have went ahead. As you can see, I have made a total of 20 and I did all different color combinations with the colors that I already had. So for my size small to medium, this is going to be the number of granny squares that I make, but I will have the written pattern available on my Patreon for sizing tips and um, all of that other information. So I'm going to start aligning them up and attaching. I'm going to attach them inside out with a single crochet chain. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm doing that right now. So I'm just going to continue off on the one that I already did. So I'm going to take um, the two that I want to attach and I'm going to there's going to be a right side and a wrong side, so I'm going to attach the outsides together and then I'm going to um, kind of fold them together and then I'm just going to place my hook. I'm going to place my hook through the corner chains and I'm going to take my base color. I'm just going to yarn over, pull through, and then make a chain, and then I'm going to place my hook through both sides. And then just place a single crochet over the top of it. So that is all I'm going to be doing to connect them together. Um, so I'm going to begin by connecting each um, row together first, lengthwise, and then I'm going to connect the two pieces widthwise. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up connecting all of these pieces and then I will be back to show you how I'm doing the edging for the top and the bottom of the skirt. So for the bottom of the skirt each row is seven granny squares across and then I just went ahead and attached both the rows together with a line of single crochet and I made sure to stagger it. I'm only gonna have five squares across for my waistline. And before I connect the waistline to the bottom of the skirt, I'm going to do the edging along the bottom. So I'm just gonna attach my base color yarn and begin with a basic row. I don't know if I'm gonna do single crochet or half double crochet, so let's see. chain one to bring up the work and then let's see yeah I'll probably just do one row of half double crochet then so all I'm doing is wrapping the yarn around the hook going through a chain I don't have to go through every single chain if it's gonna if you feel like it's gonna fan out too much I am just gonna kind of skip a chain every once in a while and I'm just going to place one half double crochet. So now that I am coming up, I probably will skip over two chains per square. So I think that's probably going to end up being what I'm going to do. But once you get over to the big um, holes in the corners, let's see how many I'll end up doing. I'm just going to go through that entire space. I'll probably just put two. Or maybe three since it's a treble crochet. So it's, it's a treble crochet, so I'll put three in those spaces. And I'm just going to skip over the join. So I'm going to go directly into the other space.
Yeah, and then every once in a while, just um, lay out your work. And if it's kind of bunching or fanning out too much, then you know to where to make the alteration, whether to add more or add less chains along your border. So yeah, that's basically all I'm gonna do. I do eyeball a lot of my patterns and I know that's not helpful for most beginners. But once you kind of make your own, you'll kind of understand like the fit that you prefer for your body. If you do want it to fan out a little bit, then you can alter the pattern however you would like. So this is just a loose guide. If you add a couple crochet, like half double crochets or subtract a couple, the pattern is ultimately gonna be pretty much the same. So it's not too crucial to do exactly what I'm doing. But yeah, so this is all I'm gonna be doing for the remainder of this border. I will come back once I have finished. So I made it all the way back around to the beginning. So I'm just gonna go through that very first half double crochet and place a place a slip stitch. Then I'm just gonna cut and tie and then loop it all the way through, double knot, and then you could weave in that end. So now I have the bottom two pieces of the skirt attached together. I'm going to be attaching the top. It is going to be significantly smaller, so we will need to be decreasing some of the chains that are connecting them together. And I found the easiest way to do this so you don't get awkward bunching is I'm going to attach both sides that I want to connect together at the same time and crochet a little bit of a ways and crochet a little bit of a ways and bunch it together as I go so that it's gonna be even on both sides. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started on that and then I'll show you what I mean. But really, you're just gonna be stretching this and then decreasing on a couple of chains here and there so that it doesn't look bunched and it looks seamless, but it has a nice curve. Okay, so now I've begun attaching it. I attached, if you can see, um, the two beginning corners together and I just crocheted a bit on both sides and then I attached the sides together and I just crocheted a bit um, onto both sides. So this is gonna help keep your work stretched while you work your way across. You could also go ahead and join the middle um, in the front and join that piece together so that when you're working your way, it won't you won't have like an awkward set of bunches and then the rest be straight. So this is just a way to do it, um, just so that you don't have to keep redoing it. So now I'm just gonna go back into this side. I have this side already connected. So when I lay it flat, then I'm gonna have to end up bunching a little bit of this together. So it just makes it easier. You don't have to go through every single chain, but it definitely makes it a little bit more straight. So now I've reached that other set that I've already connected together. So I can just go ahead and go through that very first chain. I'm just gonna cut. And then just yarn over, pull through. And so now this first section is pretty evenly spaced out and connected. And then I can just pick up where this piece has left off. Um, and then so, yeah, you kind of get the idea. So that's basically what I'm gonna be doing, making my way around. So now I have fully attached that top layer of the skirt and it looks perfect. So now we are finished with the top of the skirt. I'm just gonna add a, um, basically a string, kind of like shoelace to lace up this portion. This can lay on the side of your hip because if it's, unless you pull it really tight and it's on your back, actually, yeah, along your back could work too. So you can, um, 
have it go, you could have it lace up so the tie is on the top or on the bottom, it really doesn't matter. So you just want to make a really long chain, probably 80 to 100 chains long, and then just loop it through like a shoelace. Hey, and I then, thanks. And then once you're done with this, you're basically done with this pattern. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will see you in my next video.